So what's the goal of the gospel? What's the goal of our life? Now, the popular gospel that I described at the beginning, which was about hell and sin and going to heaven, what it says is that the goal, the the purpose, the, the, the thing we set our sight on, the popular gospel, as I call it, is heaven. I don't want to go to hell, I want to go to heaven. And popular uh, old-time gospel preaching usually focused on one of two things. It either focused on the glories of heaven and painting a really ravishing picture of that, or it focused on the agonies of hell and making people squirm in their seats. And so you present either the positive or the negative, and then what you do is you say, if you don't want to go to hell and you do want to go to heaven, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is how you go to heaven. I believe that. I believe he is the how. But notice, that presentation of the gospel makes Jesus into a means to an end. He's how I get to heaven. A friend of mine likes to say that in the North American church, we've made Jesus into the duct tape WD-40 combo pack. (laughs) He's all you need to fix just about anything. We use him to fix our marriages, to fix our homes, to fix our lives, to fix our this, fix our that, and he's how we fix ourselves into heaven. But the problem with this understanding of things is that in the New Testament, we don't see Jesus merely as the means. He's not just the how. He says, yeah, I am the way, but what? I'm also the truth and the life. The New Testament gospel says the goal is Jesus himself. And this is what Jesus preached all the time. Go and sell all you have, he said to the rich young ruler, and come follow me. Jesus makes himself the centerpiece of his message. He said to the Pharisees in John chapter 5, you search the scriptures because in them you think you will find eternal life. And yet these are the scriptures that testify about me. And yet you do not come to me. Jesus is not just the how in the New Testament. He is the treasure in the field that we would sell all we possessed just to gain. But what we end up doing when we take the popular gospel is we give people a ravishing vision of heaven or a terrible vision of hell and we say Jesus is how you get there. What we need to be doing instead is give people a ravishing vision of Jesus. He is the goal. He is the treasure. He is the Lord. And people become attracted to him. That's why nowhere in the New Testament do you see the gospel proclaimed with any reference to heaven or hell. Because it's about proclaiming Jesus. John Piper puts it this way. This is kind of a striking thing. He likes to stir the pot. He says, people who would be happy in heaven if Christ were not there will not be there. The gospel is not a way to get people to heaven. It is a way to get people to God. It's a way of overcoming every obstacle to everlasting joy in God. If we don't want God above all things, we have not been converted by the gospel. God is heaven. Jesus is the goal. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. We have subjugated him in much of the American church to being nothing more than a spiritual tool when in fact he is the Lord. He is the very goal of the Christian life. This is why getting the gospel right is so, so important. Not only because it sets our eyes and fixes them on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, but when we get the gospel wrong, we actually inoculate people to the true gospel. We teach them to say a prayer, repent of your sins, and go to heaven, and then we wonder why they exhibit nothing of Christian faith in their life. Because their goal isn't Jesus. Their goal is heaven or avoiding hell. They use the gospel as nothing more than fire insurance. We preach a gospel of fear rather than a gospel of love. 